this is where it starts. The bell above the door chimes as she walks inside. Walking up to the counter, she orders herself a coffee and goes to sit down on the couch by the fireplace. She pulls out her laptop, plugs in her headphones, and gets to work. She's got a deadline, and if she's being honest, she's nowhere near meeting it. She hasn't been feeling inspired, but the date is looming closer and closer, so she really needs to get to work. He doesn't immediately notice her. He's consumed in his work. Glancing up from his notes, she only briefly catches his eye. She's cute, he thinks, as he listens to his colleague talk on the other end of the line. He's not really paying attention to the conversation, but instead he watches as she sits down on the couch and gets herself set up. He finishes up his conference call and puts his phone down. The atmosphere around him is festive. Christmas lights are strung up in the shop, the fireplace roars in the corner, a Christmas tree is on display, and the instrumental music completes the scene. The glow from the fire hits her just right and illuminates her red highlights perfectly. Thank goodness her back is to me, he thinks. He watches her on and off for a while, wanting to go up to her, but also not wanting to disturb her. He sees her get up and go to the counter. Quickly, he jumps up and gets behind her in line. Not creepy. Don't be creepy. An Earl Grey tea and a chocolate chip muffin, please. Sure. That'll be $4.25. Before she could even pull out her money, he laid a $5 bill on the counter. She turns to face him, giving him a soft smile while tucking a strand of hair behind her ear. Thank you. You're welcome. She takes her muffin and tea and heads back to her spot. He follows her and sits down on the couch to her left. Sitting this close to her, he can see the gold flecks in her brown eyes. They talk for the rest of the afternoon, and he learns that she is just in town for a few days on a business trip. She doesn't tell him much other than that, but they do agree to meet back up in two days. She's not quite sure why she agreed to meet back up with him. She's only in the city for a few more days, and the rest of her trip is packed with meetings. But she finds herself agreeing to dinner. She gives him her phone number and packs up her things to head back to her hotel. Walking outside, she readjusts her beanie, shoves her hands in her pockets, and braces herself against a cold winter wind. She makes it back to her hotel in record time, and just as she gets into her room, her phone rings. Looking at the caller ID, she smiles and answers the phone. How'd the meeting go today? Her best friend asks. It was good. I got my deadline pushed back, so now I've got a little more time to write. That's good. Did you get anything written today? Yeah, I did. I went to that coffee shop, you know the one, where we used to spend all of our free time. Oh yeah, we used to love that place. Man, those were the days. Haha, <laughs> yeah. So I went there and I wrote for a while, but then, well, um, I ended up talking to a guy. You what? Dude, I'm so excited for you. Honestly, it's nothing exciting. We talked and we're going to dinner in a few days, right before I fly back. Isn't that a little quick? You just met him today. Well, yeah, but honestly, I'm only in the city for a few more days, and really, what's the harm? It's just dinner. There's no real commitment in getting dinner. Fair point. Are your shoulders at your ears? No, she says, dropping her shoulders. You're lying. I'm your best friend, and even though I can't see you, I know your shoulders are sky high. They're not. I mean, they were. But they're not now. Their conversation carries on until she can no longer keep her eyes open. I gotta go. I'm exhausted and I have to be up early in the morning for a meeting. I'll talk to you later. She hangs up and plugs her phone in for the night. Quickly, she washes her face and then crawls into bed. Over the next few days, she's busy with various meetings and trying to get her writing done. So she doesn't have much time to think about the guy from the coffee shop. But at 4 p.m. on Friday, she finds herself pacing around her hotel room because she can't figure out what she's going to wear. Why are you putting so much thought into this? It's just dinner. Be cool, she thinks to herself. Finally, she decides on a pair of black leggings, a thick sweater, and her favorite beanie. She puts on some light makeup, curls her hair, and pulls on her beanie. Glancing at the clock, she puts on her shoes, grabs her coat, and heads out the door. They agree to meet at the coffee shop, then walk to the restaurant. Upon arriving at the shop, she sees that he is already here and sitting on the couch by the fireplace. Walking inside, she makes a conscious effort to keep her shoulders at normal height and not up by her ears. Hey, she says walking over to him. Hi, you ready to go? He says standing up. She nods and they both make their way to the door. The walk to the restaurant is quick 
which she's grateful for because it's starting to get colder out. Inside the restaurant, it's cozy. There are not too many people here and the music is low enough that they can still hear each other talk. Conversation flows easily between them. And as they finish their meal, the conversation slows. Have you ever watched the sunset over the city skyline? He asks. No, but I would imagine it's pretty. Do you want to? I know the perfect spot. Sure, she agrees. He pays the bill and they leave. Walking outside, the evening air hits them, making them both put their hands deep in their pockets. The wind whips around them as they're walking. She's not sure where they're going, but she's okay with that. Reaching up, she pulls her beanie down over her ears and then does something that surprises her. She links her arm in his. They arrive at the park, find a semi-secluded spot, and sit down. He wraps his arm around her as she watches the sunset, not noticing that he is watching her. Deep down, she knows the probability of this ever working is slim. She flies out tomorrow night, and she's not sure when she'll be back. So, when do you fly out? He asks, turning to face her. Tomorrow night. She says, not meeting his gaze. Well, I don't know about you, but I would like for this to continue. Me too, but I'm not sure when I'll be back in the city. If you're willing, I would like to try and make this work. Really? She asks in disbelief. Yeah. One year later, flying into the city at night is one of her favorite things to do. The last time she was in the city was a year ago, and she was just finishing up her book. Now, to be back to promote the release seems crazy. The plane starts to descend as she watches the skyline grow closer and closer. Once they've landed, she quickly sends a text and gathers her belongings. Hey babe, just landed. See you soon. Can't wait. I'm a baggage claim. As she makes her way to baggage claim, it looks like every other flight has landed at the same time. People are pushing past her in a rush to get wherever they're going. Finally, she arrives at baggage claim and she can see him standing by the luggage carousel looking for her bag. Hey babe, she says. He turns and gives her a hug and a quick kiss. As they continue to wait for her bag, he wraps one arm around her waist and she leans into him. The luggage carousel is crowded and still, her bag is nowhere in sight. She mindlessly begins to pick at the skin around her fingernails, hoping her bag turns up soon. He notices and takes her hand in his, rubbing the top of her hands. Her bag finally shows up and he quickly grabs it off the carousel. Turning, he takes her hand in his and leads her out of the crowded space. Once outside, he hears her let out a breath he can only assume she's been holding in for way too long. He sees her shoulders relax, and they make the short walk to the car. You excited to start promoting Not From Here? Yeah, can you believe that when we first met, I was still working on finishing the book? Haha, <laughs> yeah, and you wouldn't tell me what you were in the city for. I remember that day like it was yesterday. And if I remember correctly, I asked you out for dinner, and to my surprise, you said yes. Yeah, but... I did make you wait a few days for that dinner, she says, smirking. That you did. The conversation lulls, and she leans her head against the cool glass. Closing her eyes, she finally feels relaxed. Their drive to the apartment is short and quick. They get out of the car, go inside, and go straight to bed. The next morning, she awoke, drank her coffee, and got ready for the day. She's taken to pacing in the closet because she's not sure what she wants to wear and what will make her feel most comfortable. Checking the weather, she decides on black leggings, an oversized sweater, and, of course, a beanie. You're going to do great, babe. The book is amazing and people are going to love it, he says, reassuring her. He's been watching her all morning. She's been quiet and more reserved than normal, and he knows that she's overthinking the whole thing. Getting up, he goes and gets himself ready for the day, leaving her to finish her second cup of coffee. She keeps glancing at the clock and double-checking her phone. You ready to go? He asks, reappearing in the doorway. She shrugs, voices a smile, grabs her bag, and heads for the door. He follows after her. The drive isn't uncomfortable. He knew she needed her space. She was going to be doing press for her book all day, and he knew she needed to mentally prepare herself. Her various interviews went amazing. She didn't stumble over her words once. Making their way back to the car, she's practically skipping. On the way back to the apartment, they stop by a craft store and pick up some painting supplies. He wanted to paint, and she just went along with it. She's not really into painting, but he likes to. Plus, he's been super supportive while she did all of her interviews. They arrive back at their place and clear themselves space on the living room floor. As he puts an old sheet on the floor, she lights a few candles and turns on the TV. They settle down and start painting. At first, she doesn't know what to paint, so she just paints her canvas yellow. She glances over at his painting, but can't quite tell what he's creating. Knowing him, it will be something amazing. She decides to put a quote on her canvas, 
one that she feels deep down in her soul. I do not rise and shine. I caffeinate and hope for the best. As she finishes her painting, she smiles down at it and giggles. He is still working on his, and now she wants to paint something else, but she's not sure what. Thinking hard, she tries to come up with something else to paint. He works on his painting as the TV plays in the background. Hearing her giggle, he looks up from what he's doing and sees her painting. He watches as she gets up and goes to place her art by the coffee pot. He turns back to his painting and adds the small yellow squares. He's painting the New York City skyline at sunset. It reminds him of the first time they went to dinner. They had walked to the Brooklyn Bridge Park to watch the sunset. It was gorgeous. He hears her cut off the TV and turn on some soft music. His mind wanders back to the early days of their relationship. The wind whips around them as they walk towards the park. It's almost sunset and she wants to watch the sunset over the skyline of the city. She readjusts her beanie and links her arm in his. They find a spot that they can have all to themselves and sit down. She rests her head on his shoulder and he wraps his arm around her. As she watches the sunset, he watches her. He notices the way her eyes widen as the sun continues to sink. Tonight has been amazing, but there's one thing missing. And what might that be? She asks, turning to face him. We've had dinner and watched a beautiful sunset, but I still don't know why you're in the city. She laughs easily. <laughs> Well, I'm finishing up my book, so I have meetings with my publisher and editor. What kind of book? A memoir. Oh, look, that's gorgeous, she says, pointing at the setting sun against the skyline. The sunset is at its most beautiful moment. Shades of purple, orange, and the last fading bits of yellow illuminate the skyline. Lights from inside the buildings appear through their many windows, creating the perfect scene. While she watches the last of the sunset, he watches her quietly. As to not to disturb the moment, he takes what will become the first of thousands of photos. Her with the sunset and the skyline in the background. All while thinking, remember this moment. Because this, this is where it starts.